Hey guys, welcome back to a uh, another episode of the JW Weatherman Show. Uh, haven't uh, haven't been putting out as much lately as uh, as I did before, but that's uh, as much a factor of just having not as much to say as anything. Um, so if uh, if you haven't been through ten hours of Bitcoin yet, highly recommend it. Um, actually, I connected with. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Goss here uh, on Twitter um, not that long ago, and uh, he went through the 10 hours of Bitcoin content and uh, had some interesting comments and feedback. And then today we started talking about this uh, service uh, Jameson Lops associated with called uh, CASA. Um, it's a pretty uh, well-respected Bitcoin custody service or um, sort of multi-sig custody service. We'll get, we'll get into it. It's uh, it's partial custody or uh, holding one of the keys. Um, and it uh, I'm pretty sure that it's insane. So we went back and forth on Twitter a little bit and then ended up making a friendly bet that I could uh, convince him uh, if we jumped online that it is pointless. Uh, or, uh, or you know, there's a hundred bucks on the line. So, hundred bucks in Bitcoin uh, to be determined uh, in this conversation. So, th yeah. thanks for uh, thanks table for and Bitcoin only. Nobody wants your uh, filthy paper money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. The, uh, um, so, yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for being willing to, I, to do this. I do want to start off with a, a disclaimer. Uh, I actually don't know all about the Casa service specifically. Uh, I uh, started. Just trying to grapple with the whole concept of, uh, uh, you know, how do you protect both against, you know, threats and loss uh, of Bitcoin, uh, and so uh, I sort of came to the conclusion that this seedless multi-sig uh, concept is the way to go, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, so Casa offers service that's something like that, uh, where they'll control or offer, you know, to custody one of the keys for you. Um, and uh, uh, to be clear, they're, uh, it's my understanding, they're not, uh, the definition of custodian that, you know, a lot of people in, you know, the Bitcoin sphere prefer uh, the definition to be, you know, somebody who can unilaterally spend or indefinitely prevent you from spending uh, your Bitcoin. Uh, right. And uh, that, that wouldn't, that definition wouldn't apply to that type of business model. Yep, yep, fair so, enough. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, so uh, we're, we're mostly going to talk about uh, authentication here. Like my, my line of argument is, is pretty simple. Um, okay. And uh, so let, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of try the uh, Socratic method with you. So, okay. So we're trying to secure, let's say we have the scenario. We're trying to secure hundred thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and um, we don't want to touch it for a long time, right? It's not our spending money. And so we set up a three of five multi-sig, uh, mm -hmm. which means you have five different keys, um, five different wallets, essentially. And let's say that they're mm -hmm. hardware wallets to, to so simplify. Def let's, yeah, let, the <laughs> let's, let's say that there are five <laughs> different, ultimately there's five different devices that you have uh, in play. Each one of those, if you have three of the five, you can spend. Just just to simplify, the, let's call uh, it scenario. let's call it device roles. Uh, the, uh, the one thing that uh, is very confusing about all this is the the precise terminology, um, right? So, like, if you have five keys that are necessary, uh, each key role, like so, key number one could be on five separate cold cards, you know, that are each identical, uh, you know. Right. Uh, so, like. Yeah, that, so, that, so let's say that just for, for um, so that everybody can kind of mentally picture this really yeah. simply. We'll just say there's five different keys. It's So it's a three of five multi-sig. That means mm -hmm. that you have to have three of these five devices in order to spend your Bitcoin. Um, and the reason that you would do something along those lines is that you can lose two of them and you're still okay, mm -hmm. right? So you could take one and put it in a basement, you know, one and put it uh, in an attic. And if your house burned down, and you lost two of them. You still have like another one at your grandma's house, one with your lawyer. And, you know, in this scenario, you know, one with one of these services, right? So you're still okay. Mm -hmm. So the idea is as long as you can get to three of the five, but you also have to be able to get to three of the five. So in other words, if you had only two of them, you can't spend, and that's good because if your lawyer goes rogue, or you know Jameson Lop gets a little bit you know desperate for some scratch, he only <laughs> has one of your keys. You know he needs to go buy yeah. some more guns and show off so, on the internet or something. <laughs> um, when I when I first started thinking about this whole uh, you know three or five multi sig seedless concept, I was like, nope, no way. Uh, you know one of these, two of these devices could fail, and it wasn't until I you know thought about the fact that you can actually have 
multiple uh, uh, instances, you know, of each uh, right. key. Uh, and so, like, uh, a lot of my concerns about failure and uh, you can make up for whatever your uh, uh, threat model or disintegration of your you know, physical device model is, uh, you can mitigate that by having, you know, 20 cold cards and 20 treasures and 20 ledgers, right? You know? Yeah. So there's, there's multiple conversations. Like one is, do you want to have those secrets, right? You, you ultimately it comes down to, there's these secret magic words, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to either store them on a hardware device or you're going to store them on paper or a combination of the two and is paper mm -hmm. better or is, you know, stamping them into steel on your engine block or whatever, right? Like where do you put those mm -hmm. things? Um, so setting that aside, let's just let's just focus on the sort of the core question of is it a good idea to take one of those secrets and put them in the hands of a company that will then hold on to that for you, um, or maybe they'll hold two of them, right? So Casa Hodl, they have a couple different services. One seems to be like sort of this phone app that does it automatically. Um, but the thing that most people know them for, the thing that they've they've been at least most known for for me over the last year is that they'll they'll hold on to one or two of the keys for you, and then I think you have three others that are in your possession. So you can always spend the money, and as long as you, the idea being, you can lose up to uh, two of yours, and they still have two, but they can't actually spend with only two, right? So it's it's basically. Uh, it's a way to provide you uh, the the impression of having some security. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you some questions about this concept and see if I can get at the argument that I was trying to, that I was Sounds obviously good. failing to make on Twitter. Okay, Sounds so let's, good. let's say my, that uh, I'm, I'm doing my this screensaver thing. seems to be going on and off. I don't know how to. Oh, it's all right. It doesn't. It's not showing up here. Um, okay, so, perfect. So let's say that I'm going to hold one of your keys, right? Um, okay. So you have five keys, and I'm going to hold one of them. Mm -hmm. And the idea is I'm only going to, like, I'm a trustworthy guy. I'm not going to lose it. And I don't have enough to actually spend your money. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to prove your identity to me? Like, under what circumstances do you expect me to use this key on your behalf? Like, what are you going to do to prove your identity or authenticate, right, is the security word for it, right. to me so as a company so that I will then use the key on your behalf? The uh, uh, so there are lots of different methods that you could use to authenticate, uh, and the question is, what is the precise security model that you're uh, you know trying to defend against? Uh, one of the things that you could actually say is, uh, I don't want you uh, uh, to uh, use this key on my behalf for a certain period of time, uh, right? So uh, you could say. So uh, at the end of the day, if you're going to that's true, but that's possible. That that has nothing to do with me being involved. You can do that with or without me. You can time, time lock. lock. Yeah, um, yeah, and it doesn't. Yeah. So let's just talk about this, the the flaw, right? The security mm -hmm. flaw in this concept is specifically rate, related to authentication. Oh. And yeah. um, so there are multiple ways that you can do it. And what mm -hmm. I'm what mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, argue is that there's no good way to do it. Um, no way that makes sense. So what way would you like, like you're designing it, So right? what, yeah, so I don't know what is technically feasible for uh, any particular service provider, like a CASA, uh, but- uh, Well, let's say, uh, let's say you're designing it, or, you know, you can make it whatever you want, right? If, like, yeah, so if it were my and, service, and I'm yeah. offering this to people, what, uh, uh, you know, what I would think would be a reasonable level of protection uh, is to have a physical, you know, face-to-face, uh, -face, in-person meeting, uh, with somebody before and after, uh, uh, you know, like, so before you get started, just to, you know, establish some understanding of the person's, uh, you know, demeanor, body habitus, character, uh, you know, actually sort of get to know somebody. Uh, like, uh, you know, if, for example, if tomorrow I saw you showing Bcash uh, on Twitter, I'd be like, yeah, that's not him, right? right. Uh, uh, so okay. something so, that would so establish I. There's a problem with that uh, from from a business standpoint, and that is it's one, it's really expensive and it's a terrible mm -hmm. user experience. So you would have to actually get on a plane and fly out to North Carolina or wherever these jokers are, spend time with them. You're also dealing with a company, right? And there's turnover in a company. So you have employees, like whoever you spend, you know, you're gonna go like buy buy Jameson flowers and take him to the shooting range or something. <laughs> there's a reasonable chance he's not gonna be an employee of the company and oh, there's also a very reasonable Death, chance you know, that people, that's not people, gonna be his you know, people die, 
right? Yeah, uh, right. yeah people, right. yeah. So I'm not saying that that would be foolproof, uh, but that would be a, something that would have to be updated in the event of uh, employee termination, you know, for <laughs> whatever reason, right? Uh, so it's not that you're going to have the set and forget, uh, and this will work perfectly flawlessly from now until eternity. Uh, but, okay, so uh, so you would spend time with a. Just let me make sure I understand mm -hmm. what you're suggesting. You'd spend time with Bob. Bob's an employee. Mm -hmm. Bob is going to spend an hour with you. Is that is that the idea, or is he going to spend a day with you? How much time is yeah. he going to spend with you? I don't know. I think an hour would be sufficient to get to know somebody. Okay, uh, but and so uh, then, you're spend but, you, but you're being you. quite. You probably need two people, right? Okay, so uh, Bob and Fred. They're going to hang out with you for an hour. What if one it. disappears? <laughs> right. They're going to have lunch with you. And uh, and then in two, three years, you're going to come back. And hopefully Bob and Fred are still there. If either one of them leave the company, then you're going to have to fly back out to spend time with Bob and Steve. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of all of this, you have employees that have spent an hour with you. They haven't seen you for years. And now they're responsible to authenticate you to, me, to ultimately give you a uh, they don't. They don't give you complete ability to spend the funds, but they give you, uh, you know, uh, thirty-three percent of the material you need to spend all the Bitcoin. Right, and so the uh, uh, the time that this would matter would be when two of your other four keys are not available. Yep. Uh, yep, it just totally. doesn't matter if just one is unavailable. Well, yeah, you wouldn't use the service otherwise. You might as well right. not even have it. So this is only in the case that you're going to present yourself to these people and say, hey, I lost a couple of my keys and I still want to spend my money. Um, right. Can I have it? So there's obviously a, a bunch of um, expense and cost associated with this. Um, but there's also some for major... Any for There's also some major actual... security flaws. Um, and so what we're actually kind of doing right now is we're mm -hmm. recreating the wheel, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. because this is how banking worked 50 years ago, right? You would go mm -hmm. in, you'd open a bank account, you kind of get to know the teller. There's a big mm -hmm. problem with that, though, and that is that um, criminals are really good at impersonating people. So if you haven't seen your bank teller for a year or two years, and keep in mind these bank tellers or these people that work for CASA, they're going to... Their, their whole job probably is going to be spending an hour with these people, right? So you, Can you you're going to see me? My screensaver went on. Uh, no, no. Yeah, you look fine. I'm just going to leave it on because there's okay. nothing to look at anyway. So Yeah, yeah, right on. Um, so these employees, they're going to have dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of people that they've spent an hour with. And so it's going to be very easy to social engineer them, right? Kevin Mitnick was this hacker so that was really that's famous. An yeah, right, so that's, um, a, uh, that's an assumption, right? So if you're talking no, about a no, high no, no. volume you know, multi, like, right. So the, but there's a price that you can set uh, at the market uh, okay. where you can expect that personal touch, right? Like it, it's, okay. What do, you, it's say, deal, what do you think you could charge for this service? So we're talking about securing a hundred thousand dollars of Bitcoin. So hopefully it's not a hundred thousand. Um, yeah. So, uh, if, if all you're securing is a hundred thousand dollars, I don't necessarily, I don't think this is uh, that the level of authentication, uh, and three or five multi sig probably isn't the right, uh, uh, you know, your, your threat model. <laughs> so uh, I, okay, I don't think so it's worth it. For no, that. So it only, that's fair enough. So you're, you're saying that this service only makes sense if you're securing a million, 10 million, like, give me a, give me a number. Um, I would say at least a couple million. Uh, okay. So let's say 2 million is the average customer balance. Um, mm -hmm. what are you charging per, per year for this service? Um, so Costa, you're, you're talking to a $10, you're thousand dollars a year. Yeah, last so uh, I'll give you a little hint. Doctors are generally horrible at business. Uh, the, uh, uh, but uh, I would, uh, I would think in the thousands uh, uh, that this should be, uh, okay. you know, say I happen to know, uh, well, let's just say 5,000, uh, 5,000 okay. per annum. So I can give you a, I can give you a rough idea of some of the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when you're, when you're yes. dealing with companies like this. So if you hired somebody to spend an hour with you, they're going to roughly need to make $50,000 a year, right? All in, that would be on the very low end of what you'd probably mm -hmm. want this person to be making. Roughly speaking, the company needs to make about 10 times that for that employee, right? This is a high tech company. This is also on the low end. So we're talking about $500,000 in revenue for each one of those employees. Big ballpark numbers, right? Like we're trying to get an idea of the size yeah. of the universe here. I, um, that's, so I guess, that means that I guess he's going to have at least, uh, what is that? Um, 
five hundred thousand dollars, we're going to charge what ten thousand dollars a year. Um, so what is that five hundred customers? No, fifty yeah. customers. So five thousand. If you had a hundred customers, each paying five thousand, that's five hundred thousand. Um, the yeah. a lot depends too, right? So I don't. Uh, so that's a hundred people per year. So he's got three hundred people at this point that he's met. He hasn't talked to you for a couple of years and seen you face to face. I'm telling you right now, as a security mm -hmm. professional, that is a very juicy target for a social engineer. So that's not a good service. I wouldn't recommend somebody do mm -hmm. that. So, because wait, so what is your question. objection? Is it the number of people? Is it the no, it, right? so what if the back end is actually they only require 50 people? So here, you know, here's or 20 the, people. Is there a, here's the problem. The problem is it's very expensive and it's very low quality authentication. It's in other words, for the amount of money that you're spending, you're not getting that much protection, right? So it would be like buying a tank and setting it in your front yard. You just spent a million dollars on a tank, but nobody's driving the tank. It's only intimidation factor and the burglar still breaks in your backyard, right? So there's, there's a, when you're working with security, it's always cost, you know, cost benefit analysis, right? And I'm telling you that from a so, security standpoint, this is, you don't get this very is, much for that. I don't claim to be an authentication expert, but uh, there's a price for everything. Uh, and there is a price at which you could obtain a strong authentication. So there are solutions that are more cost effective is the problem. And that's why this service is dumb. Um, so big picture, like just the science of authentication. If I want to determine who you are, there's basically three ways that I can do that. There's something you are, something you have, or something, something that you know. know. Yep. Those things always end up getting translated ultimately when we're dealing with something like Bitcoin into something that you know, because the Bitcoin network can't reach out and feel you, right? They can't feel right. your, your soul essence <laughs> or something, right? Uh, there's no built-in retinal scanners to the Bitcoin blockchain. So ultimately it's going to come down to, to something you know. You can take something you know and you can write it on paper, right? Like your seed, or you can put it on a hardware wallet or you can put it in your phone, right? So you're kind of able to take something you know and turn it into something that you have, but ultimately mm -hmm. it, it's it's going to be something that you know. So when you're when you're taking uh, when you're talking about authentication in general, we have this whole rich history, right? Like Bitcoin's great, but we do have a lot of information security history and banking security history. And what we know, and we can look at the options right now, right? And just kind of walk through them ourselves because even though Bitcoin's new, authenticating yourself to like a bank account or an mm -hmm. investment account is not new, right? Um, so the way that banks do it is they rely on something that you know, um, but the information, and they have to because they have to be able to authenticate you remotely, right? Because they've determined that it's just not cost effective in almost any case. Like even if you have $10 million in your brokerage account, there mm -hmm. isn't a service set up where you fly in and sit down with somebody in New York and go face to face every time you want to make a stock purchase because it's just not cost effective, right? So we can so, kind of use those analogs to get an idea. Mm -hmm. And what they've determined is it's going to have to be something that you know. The problem is, cost is that effective. There's, I would do, it's, it's an important point to make. Cost effective, uh, uh, you know, we have to scale this down to key management, right? Uh, and so. Uh, I think we should have a bunch of big caveats on what are the actual costs of running the the key management service. Uh, the, you know, I, I'm not. Well, actually, uh, so we don't. We don't. So right. the reason that we don't is because it comes down to there just aren't very many options, right? Um, ultimately, it is it, like you could show up at a place and have a retinal scan done. You could show up at a place and have a behavioral expert spend an hour with you and they had it spent an hour or with you before. Blood tests or, but there is yeah. no service in the world today that is anywhere around the $2 million range that does anything like that. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is that it's insane. It just doesn't make sense. The amount of money and effort that you're talking about putting into securing $2 million, there's nothing on the market today to secure $2 million that looks anything like that. So another variable that I think is worth defining is uh, the frequency of access, right? Uh, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter how frequent because there's no well, service like it were daily, then the costs of authentication would go up. Uh, the, uh, but if it's once a decade or perhaps, you know, once in a lifetime, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, the, the, again, that shifts the cost balance. So why don't we have that for insurance or for broker retirement accounts people don't get into very often, right? 
Um, it certainly sucks when somebody hacks your retirement account and drains it. You could, it That's wouldn't be unusual. Things, right? uh, I, I don't know, uh, but I mean, most, uh, you know, weak authentication is fine for reversible systems. So that um, is the solution that banks have come up with. They've come up with, we're going to ask your mother's maiden name. We're going to ask you some security questions. Um, maybe we'll create a, a password for you and we'll use a combination of those things. Maybe we'll text message you. Ultimately, it comes down to things that you know. And uh, because that sucks, we've had, and it's not effective, we have a lot of hacks and then we've had regulations layered on top of that that make all of these sort of things reversible, right? So Bitcoin has is set up differently. Bitcoin is set up where there's something that you have to know, and yes, it's it's irreversible. But the authentication is the same, right? The authentication is you have a password. The difference is just that it's not reversible. Right, uh, you have to rely on if you if you provide this private key, that's it. It's it's the end of the game. So mm -hmm. that is actually a better user experience because um, because now we can build on top of that. We can have things like cold card and things like that that can make that easier. Where we take the something that you know and we put it on a hardware wallet and then we put a short pin number on it or something like that. That's a right. little and easier hard, for you to right. remember. And you can you can memorize a shorter pin uh, right. and you don't have to write it down and you could expect your loved ones to also be able to memorize that and the hardware will protect your you know uh, a big seed <laughs> yep. you know? and and this is a, it's not a problem that's unique to bitcoin either um it's this this question of how do we authenticate users is a really old one and all of computer science has come up with one answer and that is public key cryptography right we don't we don't determine who you are, right? You don't put your finger, um, we've played around with it, right? We have this, th that's the thing, we have this very rich history, right? We, we did play around with, you put your finger on your Microsoft keyboard that has a fingerprint reader. We still have some of those games that we play on, you mm -hmm. know, Apple laptops today and things like that. But ultimately, that's not trustworthy because it's super easy to impersonate, right? Like you've right. seen the, the gummy bear thing where they get your fingerprint. It's not a good right. idea to Using authenticate you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not a good idea to authenticate you with something you know if that's something that you know is is uh, shared, right? So like if if that, uh, let's say I'm trying to authenticate you and your, your password is uh, Trump administration is great, right? Yeah. As soon as you say that to me, if there's anybody else that's that, or or as soon as anybody else overhears that, then they have all the information needed to impersonate you, right? So that doesn't work. The something that you know, if it if you're authenticated in that way, it's in a similar way. It doesn't work if you take a picture of your thumbprint and then you send it to me, right? Because then any now I have your thumbprint. Everybody else has your thumbprint. You touched your thumbprint on the computer at work. It scanned mm -hmm. your thumbprint. You get you go to the police station they get your thumbprint. It doesn't work because once you share your thumbprint, it's reproducible, right? Like those bits, that data that is your thumbprint or the picture of your thumbprint can be recreated. So that doesn't, the the who you are doesn't work either. The retinal scans, you know, like the, the sci-fi pop your eyeball out, you know, now I can impersonate you, but it can be a lot simpler because, um, if I know the structure, if I know the data that I have to put in, it could be as simple as holding up, you know, in some cases, a photo of the inside of your eye to whatever's reading it, right? Mm -hmm. the, the point is, whatever that secret data is that represents what you are, once it's shared with the first person you authenticate with, it's like a password that uh, that you share as you authenticate. And we used to have systems like that where you would actually give your password to the server and the server would say, okay, that's Bob. But then mm -hmm. the ser anybody that's an administrator on the server now has your password, right? right. So right. public key cryptography, the genius of that is you can prove that you have this password without actually giving me the password. I give you a little mm -hmm. chunk of data, you sign that chunk of data and send it back. I have your public key. I can I can be sure that you hear you say you are. We have not improved on that for for authentication. Like we don't we haven't touched anything that's close to that for cost effectiveness and um, and also just just for overall quality. So that's why Bitcoin uses that. That's why all systems use that. And so the solution to the problem is not for you to spend an hour with somebody. It's just for you to create a private key. Is to redefine identity as the controller of uh, you know, such and such private key. Exactly. Exactly. That's a much better user experience. It's something that can actually be secured. It works remotely, right? You don't have to get on a plane every time somebody changes a job. And it can't be social engineered. Um, 
so, so if you and, if you go back and read Kevin Mitnick's book, you're going to be like, yeah, anything that can be social engineered will be. Um, and and what we've designed with this concept of flying in is is a really bad. So the probability, right? It, it, you have to look at uh, uh, not everything. It, it, you, we can't be all 100% at 0%, right? So uh, the question is, is how much redundancy uh, can you layer into a system uh, to achieve a certain percentage of, quote, security? And it, it well, we can like layer, a we can do a lot of stuff with your private key. We can have five of 10. We can have 50 of 100, right? Well, I, we can have... On the, on the uh, proving myself to be myself, right? Like what yeah. are things that you can layer on? Uh, and uh, it's a... Uh, uh, at some point, it, it, you know, you could imagine, you know, having uh, so much time and so much effort and so much testing and whatever uh, that it would be definitely impractical or, or impossible to run a business on. Uh, but uh, uh, it's again, that's there's a price on that, and the question is, what price are you willing to pay? Uh, but there's a whole history of people doing what you're doing, what you're talking mm -hmm. about, right? This is like the if you look up like security through obscurity, uh, this is sort of along those lines. So this is where you would say, okay, I'm going to have to give you my mother's maiden name. You're going to text my phone number. You're also going to call my wife. You're going to do all of these different things. The mm -hmm. problem is, is that when you're designing a system like that, you're thinking about all the work that it's going to be for the user and how impractical it is. If there's a significant amount of money involved, the hackers are so good at figuring out what that process is. And for it to be anywhere close to cost effective, it has to scale up, right? There's gotta be, there's gotta be an employee that knows what that process is that could leak it, right? You have inside jobs at, at places like Casa, right? You have all kinds of things that work together that just make that a really, really bad idea. And that is honestly why nobody is taking any authentication system seriously in any part of information security that's not ultimately a private key. The, uh, uh, but there's certain things that are irreversible, like launching a nuclear missile, right? Uh, where, uh, uh, you know, you're not just going to let anybody wander through the door uh, who happens to have, you know, a key of a particular shape, <laughs> you know, to fit in a lock to open a, right? Like someone's going to recognize, hey, you don't look right. Uh, so it's not a, you can't no, rely no, no, on No, no, those, those nuclear missile silos are not, they're not a good example of, uh, of high end security. If they if were, was so, so actually... But those systems, okay, so something that's irreversible, uh, software companies that are digitally signing software worth billions of dollars, they authenticate people that walk into the room, right? So there, there's rooms in these software companies like Google, right? So Google will digitally sign um, their software so that if you download and install their software, you know it came from them. This mm -hmm. key that they use, it's a, it's a private key, uh, just like what we're talking about, right? Super valuable. So they put it physically in a vault somewhere. But then yeah. when they figure out who actually gets to go into that vault, there's usually a smart card involved that has a private key on it that gets issued to the employees. And mm -hmm. there could there, there's often a requirement for multiple of these people. It's like a three of five multi-sig to get into these rooms. So those are much better examples than the nuclear stuff because those okay. guys have done a really poor job with it. They've had like clear text passwords. But ultimately, it still comes <laughs> down to smart cards that have private keys on them right uh so cold card is just sort of uh sort of like you can think of it as like a smart card mm -hmm. yeah and that's because if you rely on anything other than a private key it's so easy to game and we have just learned that the hard way over the last 50 years of so, information security so easy is a relative term uh that again depends on how much you're willing to pay uh versus how much you're trying to secure right uh, there's no, listen, another thing. listen, in radiology, I'm sure mm -hmm. that there's certain things that you guys have done over the last 50 years that you're never going to do again, right? There's probably certain it. practices, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that are no longer you, necessary. You, you, you experimented. Like pneumoencephalograms, uh, we inject yep, air into yep. the CSF space and it hurts like crazy. And, uh, yeah, and you just don't get anything out of it, right? So it's not a matter of we could do that method better. It's just a matter of that's a bad method. We've learned the hard way that's a bad way to do it. That's the same thing with all of these other things for authentication. We've learned the hard way that ultimately it comes down to the only way that I can authenticate you in a robust, secure way that's anything close to cost effective. And cost effective being like not stupid, right, is through public key cryptography. The well, not not in isolation, though, right? I mean, uh, the uh, uh, 
you're still using human factors at the end of the day, just because somebody happens no. to have. Uh, no, you're not. You're uh, those human no. factors are too easy to name. You know, signing things, right? If uh, somebody clubs somebody to death on the way into work, uh, tortures them for all the information. Okay, all right, let me let, let's let's try it this way. Let's, gender, let's, the wrong race, the wrong height, the wrong everything. Uh, let's try it this way. Those yeah. are, the the problem is all those attributes are really easy to fake. People, there's enough people out there that look similar to where you can get you can you can navigate that maze too easily if there's anything of value that you're securing for that to be a good way to do it. But let me just present to you an alternative, okay? And you right. tell me why this alternative isn't just like obviously much better, right? right. Okay, so we, we create the same five keys. You mm -hmm. take those five keys and instead of giving them to, a, giving one of them to a company that is set up to, uh, to authenticate defend you. Them. Yeah, defend them yeah. from others and harm and yep. loss and theft. You, uh, yeah. you take one, that one that you were going to give to that company mm -hmm. and you just put it at the bank. You get a safe deposit box and you put it at your bank. Okay. So you're going to walk into your bank and you're going to use your driver's license, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to use your, your identity. Um, and it's not very secure, right? But you're kind of okay with this because it's, uh, let's say that we make it a uh, four of seven, right? You have to have four keys out of the seven now. And mm -hmm. so you have to walk into the bank, you're gonna show them your ID. We know that that's shitty, right? Like we know that's a bad way to authenticate, mm -hmm. um, but it's not anything worse than spending an hour with this dude and not mm -hmm. seeing him for two years and then showing up again and hoping he's still there. I, I'm not willing to concede that, but I see what you're, I, I understand what you're, what okay, you're saying. I, well, let's say that it's twice as bad. It's twice okay. as bad security. Um, but now we have four keys, right? So for, for basically no cost, We've made it to where you have to have four keys instead of three keys. And whatever we've lost by, you know, Jameson Lop just, he gives you back rub so he knows you really well and the guy at the bank doesn't, you've gained because you've added another key, right? It's more than compensated for that. And if you don't like that one, let's go seven is you of- can layer, you, so you, so you increase the number of keys, the multi-sig, increase M in your M of N. Uh, yeah, exactly, let's go seven of 10. I see what you're saying. Uh, so scale this. Uh, so now right. you have seven keys. You have one with your grandma. You have one buried in your backyard. You have one in a safety deposit box. You have one okay. with your attorney. You have one at your office at work. Let you me have start one with your wife. Let me start with a threat model I was thinking about uh, when uh, uh, trying to figure out, you know, how does one, you know, so Bitcoin, right? We've watched this go from you know, uh, 10 to a penny, right? To like 10,000 a piece, right? Uh, and so it's, when you're trying to figure out what is an appropriate way to secure your funds, it's, you, you can't think about uh, what is the value now? You have to at least give some thought to what is the value gonna be in 10 years, right? Uh, so uh, uh, I, the threat model that I would, that I was considering is someone, uh, a, a, an attacker who has full access to all of your private property uh, and all the private property of those uh, that you would trust, that you know. Uh, and uh, you could argue who could such an attacker well, be. Wait a minute. If it's if it, if he has access to all of the private property of everybody that you trust, then he has access to all the private property of Jameson, right? Because he's somebody that you trust. The um, uh, I guess that's another... So then this is where it would be fun to have a lawyer here, right? Is to figure out uh, what can you compel uh, in a legally discoverable sense uh, uh, a, you know, a third party to perform uh, you know, on your behalf, right? Uh, well, best case scenario is nobody even knows that this third party has your stuff, right? Right, right. So, so or in, it, and perhaps that they're in another country or some other jurisdiction, right? Like there's, uh, uh, there yeah, are ways. Here, here's the problem. If you're worried that you're going to lose one of your keys, or you're going to lose, let's say that you have a three of five and you're mm -hmm. concerned that you're going to lose four of the keys. So you take two of them and you give them to Jameson. Jameson mm -hmm. is not any better set up than your aunt, right? Or any to other to, to, challenges to, of, uh, to authenticate you uh, and determine who you are. Your aunt is obviously going to be better. She knows you better and she can't spend any money either. So she'll, right? have, to come on, uh, she'll have to come on the airplane with me. Uh, and if I'm trying to sue you and I've mm -hmm. seen that we've had this conversation or I've seen that you've tweeted or you're a Bitcoiner, I'm going to probably subpoena Casa Hodel, right? If I'm suing anybody, 
right. any, I'm, I'm probably going to do discovery. I'm just going to send a quick letter to Casa Holder, <laughs> Hodel, and the other 13 companies that have ever played around in this space because it's super <laughs> cheap. Probably not going to send something to your aunt. I'm not even going to think of that, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no scenario in which this third-party company is better to entrust with one of your keys than either just jumping on a plane and opening a bank account in Hawaii and throwing it in there, burying it in your backyard. There's an infinite number of places that you can put one of these keys or two of these keys that's better than this company that uh, that's set up to do this. So it's not that you can't find one specific example where no matter what security measures that you employ, that you can find a flaw with it. The question is, is here are the, the threats that you're trying to defend against and what are the, uh, the probability of each, uh, right? So I give one to my aunt, uh, she's gonna lose it. I give one to Jameson, he's not, right? So in the, the event that I have a house fire uh, and my aunt loses uh, uh, you know, one of the keys, I have Jameson, right? The probability of that scenario, I would argue is much higher than, uh, you know, a return to the 1930s, you know, you're not allowed to own gold, you know, uh, you know, government confiscation kind of thing. Well then put right? it in a safety deposit box, right? You, I mean, the point is safety deposit boxes are cheap. But, and then, they're and just then about as good for authenticating you as Jameson can be, and they're right. as reliable. So if you're looking for that, go safety so deposit now box. You, but now you if need you're to looking for it. not subpoenaable, Go mm -hmm. put it with somebody that is not likely to be asked for that data of you if you're being sued, right? And you can do a combination of these things. You can spread around as, and as, do all kinds as, of stuff. I think you should. And what are things about at the, the point where you're spending ten thousand dollars to do uh, to have somebody hold two of your five keys, you have made very bad decisions. What if it were one of your five keys? If it was one of your five keys, it wouldn't be as bad of a decision. But for ten thousand dollars a year, are you Why crazy? The why is two worse than, I, I want to understand your thought process because uh, you, you're making an assumption well, because, that I don't because, understand. Because you would have, so if they hold, the whole point of having five one, keys, mm -hmm. the whole point of having five keys is that you're spreading them around, right? So mm -hmm. if you're going to have them hold two, um, you're just trusting them more is all it comes right. down to, right? Right, so you're not that, as, as optimally right. as you could. Right. So I, if, if I had five keys, I would have, again, one with an attorney, probably one with a loved one. Um, Jameson Lop wouldn't be high on that list, right? There's too many other options. I would probably bury one, right? And just remember the location. I'd probably have one in my home safe. And the more worried I was that I was going to either lose them or they were going to get hacked, I would just continue to increase that M of N number. And the, the point at which I'm spending $10,000... Mm -hmm. $10,000 a year is a lot of money for securing 2 million when that's only holding two of these keys, or maybe you want to have 10 or 15 keys involved if you have $2 million in play, right? So it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. And at the end of the day, they, yeah. they cannot authenticate you much better than the bank down the street and the safety deposit box. And arguably they authenticate you much worse. The, um, again, the, the strength of their authentication, uh, whatever, you know, whoever they are, uh, is something that you can choose to tailor to depending on how much money you're willing to spend, right? Like you could say, and yeah, I must bring my aunt with me, right? Yeah, but you uh, don't, the, the, you, that's not I, how security I, I, people design stuff. Like, I'm not going to say, hey, I've got this service. It's kind of dumb because all you have to do is, you know, um, uh, show an ID or we have a voice conversation or whatever, but you can customize it. That's not reasonable. That would be like if I walked into you and I'm like, hey, I need a radiologist. I know mm -hmm. the test you're about to give me is probably not going to show if I have cancer or not, but I get to customize it, right? No, that's what I'm paying you for is to be the expert, to tell me as the consumer what I should do to keep myself safe, not so that the consumer can, can learn all of these same lessons again and say, hey, I want, I want to do what you just did and try to design a system that Kevin Mitnick showed uh, right. and a lot of other people over decades showed is really, really bad and only an amateur would come up with something like that. So as again, now if we switch our threat model to what does the average person need to be, you know, thinking about, uh, it, it's hard if we keep jumping around from different threat model, different threat model, uh, you know, to figure out what no, makes- No, no, we, we haven't jumped around. We're trying to secure $2 million worth of Bitcoin at present day value. Which I'm could- saying, Which, which could, could go to 200 problem. million, could right. go to 2 billion. Point being, you don't use a service 
to hold your key when they can't authenticate you materially better than a safety deposit box in a bank. Except I've now added one time delay step uh, where you're going to have to sue somebody, get, you know, uh, so you're arbitraging, uh, you know, the bank quick, easy to get in. You won't, you might not even know uh, that they've been in. Uh, uh, again, this, I think it would be helpful to have a lawyer for this particular threat model. I, uh, I don't understand what the threat is. You're talking about getting sued. No, no, not getting sued. Uh, uh, think, you know, 1930s era when government confiscated gold and forced you to purchase it. Yeah, after- let me tell you what that threat model looks like. Government yeah. agents show up at wherever they think might have the stuff that they want, and they mm-hmm. say, give me. And mm-hmm. Jameson Lopp and his company is going to be just as pliable and just as willing to hand it over as your bank. The... Prob- so I guess, I guess that's the question that I think. Uh, uh, if that's you know, a question in your mind, that's insane. Like, there's no way that he's going. Look so at what happened to Lava Bit. Long. Look at what happened to yeah, any yeah, of this. Talk about Lava Bit. How long? How many hours did that take? Probably quite a few, right? Uh, they dude printed it out, you know, in like 0.4 size font, right? Uh, the so, so you're going to spend ten thousand dollars a year because you think that's possible that the government's going to try to con- to subpoena. Uh, or take your keys, and Jameson is such a cypherpunk, he's going to make that difficult. That's Do insane, I, man. That's not, that's not, uh, that's, that's your judgment call. Uh, and uh, uh, um, yeah, and the way you say it like that, I'm actually not, I'm, I think there actually is a, a good idea behind that statement. Uh, the, uh, uh, um, so, but, so that's one out there threat model that I think is unlikely. Uh, but suppose it did come to pass, uh, and suppose that you did have, uh, you know, some kind of. Do you work man. for Casa Hotel? No. Have you kissed no. Jameson Lop? I have not kissed him, but I've shaken okay. his hand. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Are you just in love with this guy? Because I, I feel like we've we've gone to fantasy land at this point, where uh, so, uh, you're uh, you're you're reaching so far to justify that this he could do, that he could being well, a good idea. I'm not reaching at all. You're, I'm saying that I think that it would not be uh, beyond the skills of Jameson Lop to. Do what has been done uh, at a place like Lava Bit. Uh, I don't think that's a stretch. It's been proven that you can actually, uh, uh, you know, have legal rights and exercise them uh, without instantly folding, as you suggest. Uh, and I think that's the thing that you have to that you have to agree with. No, I don't agree with that at all because the government has addressed this. Right? They they had an issue with Lava Bit. Lava Bit yeah. is a cautionary tale. It's not an example yeah. of how you run things. It's okay, an indication me. to you as the consumer, that the government will go to extreme lengths to get your data. And that now they have a process that they were they were developing and they were implementing where they hand a piece of paper to somebody that says, you can say nothing, you can do nothing, uh, give us access to this hardware or you go to jail for treason. That's what right. it looks now, like now. now. That's not what I, it looked like when Lava Bit right. was involved. Lava Bit was you- a, a turning point. Right. So, so what you would be purchasing for five thousand, ten thousand dollars a year, whatever, is to uh, is to be raising that governmental bar. No, to that, you you, you are not court. raising the bar. These guys, Jeremy, is not going to. He's not Jesus. He's not going to die for you. When the government shows up and gives Jeremy a piece of paper that says this is a gag order, you're not allowed to say anything. And further, if you no, don't that's... hand over everything that you have right now, you're committing treason. And that's no joke. You're no, enabling saying, terrorism. You're He's not going him. to play the lava bit card. That game is no. over now. He's going to no, hand say, it no. over. So what, no, I, what you're saying is the lava bit card no longer exists. Yes. I'm, I'm willing to grant you that. Uh, I don't know that it's true, but I, for the sake of argument, I think it's a very reasonable thing to assume is true. Uh, the What I would have done. This is such a stupid conversation, even at this point. Like this okay, is well, in such a niche, weird thing to think that Jameson would even care enough about you to try to solve this problem if he could, and that it's worth $10,000 over just burying the thing in your backyard. Uh, 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 What I'm saying is if you're going to employ, you know, some third party, third party service to be defending one of your keys, you've all of a sudden changed the level that the government or whoever your attacker would be, uh, that's going to try to use a legal system uh, to get access to it. You've now forced them to go up to the level of, you know, gag orders and FISA. No, no, you've made it much more convenient than if you just gave it to your aunt and they don't even know that your aunt has it. You've made it much more convenient. You're you're arguing for security by obscurity. 
no, is what better I, than. Listen, when it comes to you're you're putting it in the hands of a meat person, right? A person that can be shot, mm -hmm. and you're asking that person to hold this object for you. It does come down to if somebody with a gun finds that person, you got to assume that object is compromised now because nobody's going to die for you. That's a very reasonable way to look at this. Hundred percent agree. But now okay. you force the person to be to have to use force or to be threatening. You know, you've raised the attackers. Oh, that's uh, not no no no. That's that's nothing. Step. That's that's a routine. That's daily order of operations here. So you're suggesting that it would be routine. Uh, uh, I'm not, not that any of this is routine, right? Like we're talking about. <laughs> no, no, this is very routine. These gag orders are happening daily with all kinds of services that aren't nearly as nefarious or um, rebellious looking as something like Casa Hotel. Are there any, is there any data on that? Uh, uh, do a Google search on, um, uh, but, but, but I guess my point oh is, my is that- gosh. So here's the, th here's the thing that like drives me nuts with the Bitcoin community, right? Like mm -hmm. you're a radiologist. If I was telling you, hey, you know, if, if it looks like this, um, or if you're telling me that, look, when I look at the film and it looks like this, that's probably bad news. Uh, right. I, you know, I would just believe that, right? you've, you've, you've gone through all that 10 hours of Bitcoin material. Mm -hmm. You could see that I've produced the most, according to Jameson Lopp, actually, the most thorough uh, security design document on Bitcoin published to date, I think is what he said. And I'm telling you that these are happening and you're like, ah, I'm not sure. I, I shot I, guns with Jameson and he's a cypherpunk. So, uh, the, uh, uh, so I, I, no, all I'm saying is I'm saying this is outside of my expertise uh, and to the listener, uh, you know, this is something that I can't assess the truthiness of, right? Uh, that's all I'm saying. Uh, all right. Let me, let me see if I can do a Google search for you. Uh, Google. But uh, I guess what I'm saying, when, you, when you're using a third party service to defend a key uh, in a business relationship, you've now changed the level of uh, legal techniques that 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 attacker would have to be using uh, as opposed to just, you know, two federal agents showing up at the door and looking scary and getting someone to do stuff they weren't legally required to do like they might do with your aunt. OK, so right. quick Google search uh, just to, to, to put this part of it to bed. Um, if you search for Google hands over data to government, the first article that comes up is, uh, oh, geez, it's freaking CNET and their ads. Uh, <laughs> yeah. First article okay. that comes up is CNET, Google reports all time high of government data requests. And Google's latest transparency report, even more governments want to know what people are doing online. So it's not just the US government, it's, and mm -hmm. it's like, it's a very well known fact that every day Google gets requests from the government saying, I want you to give me everything that you have on these people, the set of people, all of the people that accessed your service from these set of IP addresses, whatever. Google has hundreds of people and all they do is respond to these data requests. If Iran wants to know what's going on with some of their users, they may be a bad example due to embargoes and weird stuff right now. Sure, sure, but I if, get it. If, uh, if Saudi Arabia wants to know what uh, a specific person is searching for, they put in a request to Google and they get the data and there's a huge team that does that. It is very, very routine. Um, Google hates it. It's not good for their brand. Apple's been fighting it, right? You've seen this stuff in the news. But Apple's every, been but, actually pretty aggressive in fighting but it. But they have to hand it over, right? The only way that Apple is finding, well, and this is Apple, actually a great point, the only way that Apple is finding a way to not have to hand this over is to not have the data in the first place. So they're trying to set up systems where you have a private key and it's the way that you authenticate to all these services and all your data is mm -hmm. encrypted. And if you don't have that private key, the data isn't available so that Apple can get themselves out of this situation. But so, companies like Casa Hotel are doing mm -hmm. the exact opposite. They're working to insert themselves into the role that Apple doesn't want to be in by having all your sensitive data and having it not encrypted in a way that it's, it's secured with a private key. The uh, as a as an absolute last resort, uh, so the so uh, that's not the so you know like a uh, these um, Merkleized abstract syntax 
tree type uh, constructions where you know you only have to reveal uh, whatever path you took uh, for that particular transaction that no one needs to know about all the other uh, contingency cases right the the, the goal of casa uh, uh, or any reasonable service that would act like this uh, of 3 or 5 multisig in general uh, is that so that you don't have to use the emergency key right like that's the, the ultimate goal is to design something so you don't have to use it if you don't uh, have to use the emergency key then the one in your safety deposit box in the bank is just as good other than if you, you, if you pick the threat model of you know 1934 era, government is going to go in and take everything that's in the bank safety deposit box and issue you a receipt, right? It's uh, the same, and again, it's only one key anyway, right? You argue well, so it's still I, not enough to actually take your funds. So the question is, what are you supposed to do with all of the keys, right? And and you're arguing that zero of them should be in the in professional zero of them should be in the hands of a company that's sure to be a target of something like that that can't authenticate you any better than the $30 a month bank down the street that's actually more expensive than if you just get an attorney you can get an attorney you can have client confidentiality you can drop off an envelope with the attorney that just says only give to me if i ask for it right and the attorney doesn't even know that it's a bitcoin key in the first place that's far cheaper. It's far better. The point is, there are so many better options for having one of the keys being with an attorney that doesn't know what they're custodying. If attorneys offer, you know, here I'll pretend that they do. That is a very common service of attorneys. Um, you could have it's ten custody. attorneys mm -hmm. with ten different keys, where you have to have access to eight of them in order to spend your money for less than it would cost you for Casa for a year at ten thousand dollars a year. So uh, we also have to bring this down into, you know, I'm a radiologist. I happen to have some technical skill. If you're going to tell me tomorrow to go set up even a two of three multi-sig, uh, I'm going to need a few hours to figure out how to even do that. Right? It's actually not practical to do, uh, in, in my opinion right now, it's not really easy or it's not really reasonable for a non-technical person to do a multi-sig setup. That's a different question, though. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think, the, question, I think actually it sounds like not... Cold Card is going to have that within the next few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. So that's going to be really interesting. I'm looking forward to that. But the point is, at the end of the day, CASA provides a very specific service. They hold on to a couple keys for you. And then they authenticate you and give you access to those keys. And the way that they authenticate you is a bad idea. It's not something you should rely on. It's something that the security industry has figured out is a bad idea over many decades. And if you really want to do it, is more than available in much better forms for much cheaper in right. everything from an attorney to a CPA to a safety deposit box. So you're saying that... Uh... The person that, like me, who has two private keys, uh, uh, you know, two hardware devices with private keys, going to them uh, and saying, you know, please authenticate me. He, you know, uh, here are my private keys that I already have. Right? That that's somehow worse than. Uh, no, that's great. But if you're going to, that's like saying, okay, I want you to hold my private key for me mm -hmm. because I don't think I think I might lose my private key. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show up and authenticate myself using a private key. You using are two private keys. person. You would have to have at least two, you, otherwise, otherwise, why would you bother, right? If you it, didn't have it, it doesn't private. matter if that if you can't see that that circular logic, then there's no way that I can help you because that's not security or anything. That's just simple. If you told me, "Hey, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my password. Can you hold on to my password for me?" No, and I, I'm going to prove who I am by providing a password. I'm just going to run from you because you're insane. No, no. So I'm saying I have uh, five passwords. I can assure myself that I can securely store, you know, two or maybe three of them. I'm trying to find places to put the other two. And uh, I have one friend that I think yeah, it might be sort of reliable. Uh, uh, and I want to have one person uh, that, sh that, I can that should be reliable uh, uh, to not lose them. Uh, Listen, if it's, I understand that authentication won't necessarily be perfect. If you're uh, assuming shitty authentication, right, then do an attorney, do a safety but, deposit box, do a CPA. If you're assuming that this is really good authentication, then it needs to be based on private keys, private which is what you're trying to secure in the first place. No, 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 no. You're not. No. So you're trying to defend against the loss of more than uh, more than two of them. Right, so it's not it's not I can't remember one password. It's that I can't remember 
uh, I need to remember at least three of five, right? So uh, you could, uh, and I think- All, all you've done there, should require, all you're doing there is you're taking a three of five and you're making it a two of five. You can just do that right off the bat. Just make it a two of five then. Or time lock it, right? Uh, have a, a or time lock three of five for now and then in a year make it <laughs> two of five. This is the thing that's there. insane. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my keys. So I'm going to show up and authenticate. They don't. I don't think they do that. From what I can tell from Casa, they don't do that. They ask you specific questions, just like a bank would, uh, mm -hmm. to verify your identity. You know, mom's maiden name, crap like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it again. I don't know the specific details of their service, uh, but uh, uh, some of the things that I think I've learned from talking with you is it does make sense uh, to make uh, uh, whoever comes up and pretends to be me. Uh, make require them to have at least two of the keys. No, it doesn't. It doesn't because if you're going to authenticate somebody with private keys to get to private keys, you're insane. Because you're saying there's the human aspect. If you're got if you've got to have private keys in order to show up and authenticate yourself, then just use those keys and authenticate yourself to Bitcoin instead of this person that's going to then authenticate you to Bitcoin. That the intermediary is that. totally unnecessary. But you're missing the the uh, you're missing the concept. It's not just one key that I can't keep track of, right? If this, if I would totally agree with you, if we were talking okay, about so, the, so you're saying it's a three of five, three, three or a four or four, okay. I would totally agree with you. So it's sort of uh, what you're saying is it's a, you're thinking of it now as like a backup. So you have three of five, they have two, you one. lose one, but, you use the two that you still have to get access to one of the other ones that they have. Or right. Whatever. And you could argue that I'm, you know, super tentorially, or meaning just in my head, uh, thinking I'm getting something by having some human authentication in addition to uh, the two private keys that I do control. Yes, because you could, if you're, if you're really worried about that, just do a three of six or a two of six. Well, except I can't. <laughs> um, well, that's uh, that's a totally yeah. different thing. They can't make multi-factor authentication any better than anybody else right now. Uh, it's a, it's a sad state of affairs. It's not in Bitcoin Core. Um, it's not in Casa, or it's not in uh, Cold Card yet. But it's it's coming and it's it's getting there. Um, and maybe you know, let's just say for the sake of argument, they are making it a little bit easier right now. I still wouldn't trust them to do that, uh, frankly. But uh, so but the main thing that they're offering and the thing that they will still continue to offer into the future is that they will hold some keys for you and authenticate you. And since using keys is the only way to properly authenticate somebody, it's crazy. And so, if you don't want to authenticate properly, you just want to have backup and redundancy and you're okay with the possibility that somebody pretends to be you with your attorney because it's a one of the four keys that they have to have or the three keys they have to have then just use an attorney. There's so many benefits to using an attorney beyond client confidentiality. Nobody's well, going to know. To figure out how do I use my attorney uh, uh, to make to have him or have my attorney make sure that I have uh, keys? All you have to do is if if you if you have an attorney or if you don't have an attorney, you can just store the seed somehow in a sig with or two you, four with the other. Attorneys, uh, here's here's an example. They often will keep a copy of your will for you, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll keep other important documents as well. So any attorney, if you just say, here's an envelope, I would like you to give it to my wife if I die, or just hang on to it until I ask for it, they're more than happy to do that. It's a mm -hmm. very common service that attorneys do. CPAs will do that as well. Um, and of course, banks will do that. So it's Without like- these, knowing the contents of the- Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they're going to assume, they're not going to go, oh, it's a Bitcoin seed, which is great, right? They're going to assume it's a will. They're going to assume it's that you know, like it be photos of your ex-wife or something, right? right? Right. But that seed, so here's our thought, right? <clears throat> that seed could be encrypted I mean, in a Shamir secret sharing kind of way uh, where you would need yeah, to you're, have you're two just, out of four. Yeah. You're just kind of going, I mean, it, that, that is one way of that. basically I'm trying, to have, a I'm trying to find a way of having my attorney uh, um, hold something that I would need to have private keys to get. But you don't and want it, that because if you have to have private keys, okay, let, let, let's, let's, yeah. <laughs> I'm going crazy. All right. So you walk into your attorney and mm -hmm. you say, I'm Bob. I gave you that envelope. Remember how we talked about that. You would only give me the envelope. If I proved who I was, here's my private key. 
the, okay. the, the problem with that is where did you get that private key? Oh, well, I buried it in my yard, right? Okay, well, why don't you just use that private key that you buried in your yard mm -hmm. to spend your Bitcoin? Why do you take that private key to authenticate yourself to get another? We could do this all day. Why don't yeah, yeah. we have it's, a private key to get to a private key to get to another private key to get to another private key to get to another one? Because it's stupid. Because if you have the, if the only thing that you need to possess to have control of that Bitcoin is private key A, and you can just go and trade it until you get to private key Z without providing any other authentication, then just use private key A and save us all a lot of grief because you're not adding any security. Other than, I mean, arguably you're adding sort of a time lock element, right? Or an effort element, you know, it's a treasure exactly. hunt now. Yeah, it, it's a bit of a treasure hunt. And you're now, uh, you know, now your local sheriff's office can't do this to you. It'd have to be, you know, the next level up of government, right? When you're uh, involving you know, but then, local jurisdictions <laughs> or... Yeah. The, the, the other part of the problem is if you create mm -hmm. these really complicated things like treasure maps, it's way more likely that you're going to lose your Bitcoin than that somebody's going to steal it anyway. Like at the point right. when you're doing three right. or five multi-sig to secure only a couple million bucks, you're not the biggest idiot in the room, right? Um, and so you're probably not going to get hacked. Probably Somebody's probably not going to steal it. But it's pretty easy to lose three objects, right? Um, it's, you know, your town could have a flood, right? Like a, a mm -hmm. lot of people that I've talked to on Twitter, they're like, oh yeah, you know, I, I've got it. I've got it, uh, in my house and, uh, at the bank down the street. And I like, I live in the Midwest right by a river. Like, uh -huh. yeah, you know, you're probably all right, but, but maybe jump on a plane or maybe, uh, you know, get a safety deposit by like one of the very core basics of information security is that you never want to have your backups in the same location as the original data. We've right. learned that the hard way right. too. Right. So ultimately though, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of things that you could do if it's significantly expensive, um, there better be significant benefit. And these companies that are charging, you know, 10 grand to hold on to your private keys, they are, they're better targets for government. They're not really set up. Everybody knows that they have Bitcoin, right? Nobody's going to go just start shooting attorneys or trying to strangle attorneys and say, give me all access to all your documents and your envelopes because I think there might be Bitcoin in it. But what a juicy target is Jeremy Welch, right? Like, mm -hmm. There, there's so many downsides to this idea of a known company that just holds these private keys. And, and ultimately, they're not authenticating you materially better than your attorney, probably worse. So it's just not a great idea. But that's it, well, man. That's, that's my whole yeah. argument. I've got nothing else. So if I didn't, yeah. I, didn't I, I, I think what you're saying, I think you could convert your attorney into somebody that could authenticate you with private keys by making sure what they were storing uh, was something that uh, would require private keys. Whereas I don't think Casa would have much of a, uh, or you know, any technical company in the Bitcoin space would have a difficult problem saying, yeah, sure. Part of the authentication scheme that we're going to use is that you're going to have to take, you're going to have to show us two, you know, sign messages with two out of four of your other keys, right? And so I'd say now at least we've collapsed back to what it sounds like you're advocating is that just whoever happens to have these keys. Is no, the I, I was only trying to show the logical insanity of that. I wasn't actually suggesting oh. it was a good idea. I was trying to help you see how stupid it was to authenticate to somebody that is then going to authenticate yeah. on your behalf using a system that's e either exactly the same or much more insecure. Cause so those are your two options. You're saying you can't layer on any human element, uh, uh, that would uh, provide measurable security. I'm I'm saying that it doesn't. It's not a bad idea to have humans hold on to things for you and authenticate <laughs> you, but that is very very weak authentication, and you shouldn't trust it very much. And you certainly shouldn't. So uh, but would you do? Would you advocate I, I wouldn't, keys and personal? You know, like some kind of human squishy you know, wet, uh, you know, brain based, uh, authentication scheme. D depend. I would say that it would not at all be a bad idea. You know, if you're talking about, you know, $10 million, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do something like four of seven multi-sig where you have to actually have four keys. It wouldn't be a bad idea to, to, to put it in a bank, to put one of them in a bank, right? Again, you have to have one of them with a CPA, with an attorney in a safe, buried in the backyard at the 
you know, it, and maybe in multiple countries as well, um, because it's a good idea to have plane travel involved. There's a lot of things that you could do, right? I think it would be great if somebody wrote a doc saying, yeah. hey, here's, you know, here are, um, here's some, real- some, some scores, right? Like you, mm-hmm. you get plus one if you have your keys in multiple countries. You get plus one if you yeah. uh, have it in, in a location where only you know where it's at, right? Like there's probably a lot of uh, uh, work to be done there that would be valuable. Yeah. Um, but one of those things shouldn't be a service that advertises, hey, everybody, I hold keys. And it certainly shouldn't be a service that advertises I hold keys if they charge a lot of money to do it. And if ultimately they can't authenticate you any better than all of these other things, right? So a, a, a big part of the problem in security is if you know what your risk is, then you then you mitigate that, right? So I mm-hmm. know that I can't trust my aunt if she knew what she had in that envelope mm-hmm. and it was gave her you know power over my Bitcoin, she might spend it. Fine. Um, I know that you know I don't see my aunt very often. Somebody might be able to you know impersonate me even and uh, and get a hold of of the keys if there's the, if there's enough money involved. Fine, but you're not. It's a one of, of seven sort of situation, right? Mm-hmm. The problem with something like Casa is they give the strong impression that they can effectively authenticate you, right? They they are going to be able to figure out who you are and only under that circumstance give you access to your keys, and that's just simply not true. So it gives you this, you're not treating it as a weak link. You're treating it as the strongest link in, in the whole setup. And that, you know, that's part of the problem. And for $10,000 The strongest year, link? No, you're treating it as like the, the last you know, line of defense. You're not uh, spending $10,000 a year if you don't think that they are doing a good job keeping those keys safe. And that's the problem. It, like, at the part, event, in the event that you lose two of your own. Sure, but that's the whole thing. Would you pay a friend? To keep to take to defend the, your keys for you, it's probably not a good idea that the person that's holding it even knows what it is. Why would you want to do that? I agree that security by obscurity makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, it, it's, but it's I mean, trying to get obscurity through someone who uh, actually knows how to perform the task that you're asking of them. They don't know how to perform the task that you're asking. They will not tell you that don't they are authenticating you. In no, no, no. a really great, strong way. They're, they've been very shady on Twitter. That's part of the reason that I, I was. I don't. I don't know how they do authentication. Like, but well, I, isn't I, that weird? Like you're a big fan of this service, and I didn't, all I didn't they do, the all they I do is authenticate you and give you access to your keys. But it's not clear how they do that. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, the um. It's because so it's I, stupid. I, I, to, I don't want to say that I am a big fan of the service. What I am a big fan of, uh, which is what I originally got started thinking about, is do seedless uh, uh, hardware wallets, do these make any sense? That's, uh, a, that's a different issue. Um, I mean, it's an interesting right. topic, but it, it's it's unrelated, right? Because you can either have, you could have the piece of paper with the secret on it or you could have the hardware device with the secret on it, or you can have it on both, right? Yeah, but um, and you can collapse the number of bits that you need to memorize if you don't want, uh, you know, yeah. if you want to solve, you know, ultimately then- I know, I mean, I, look, I think that, I think ultimately in, you know, 10 years, everybody's going to use hardware devices. They're going to be code reviewed enough to where it's gonna make sense. Um, they're gonna be open source hardware and, and the hardware design is gonna be reviewed enough and we're gonna have some confidence in the supply chain. There's a lot of problems that that would keep so, me up at night if my Bitcoin was secured with hardware devices. So that's actually but in 10 I years, I think that will be addressed. I think people will use multi-sig on hardware devices for their savings. They'll have it distributed in geographical locations. They'll probably be great services like what CASA could have been or what you and I have been discussing where people will say, hey, if you're trying, you know, here, here's how many keys we recommend you use for this dollar amount. And mm-hmm. here's some criteria, right? Like one of the keys should be in a foreign country, mm-hmm. blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think all of that stuff will be established, you know, over the next 10 years. But as it is right now, we just have really shady folks saying, hey, give me your keys and give me a bunch of money and I'll th- authenticate you. The, um, uh, so having someone set up, you know, a three or five multi-sig for you uh, using, you know, hardware, multiple pieces of, you know, hardware from different places, presumably, so it should be somewhat more resistant to supply chain attacks. Uh, 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 and, you know, custodying, uh, a, you know, one of the keys for you. 
some part of that is definitely a valuable service. You could be, you could say, sure, you pay your, you know, that may be something valuable the first year, but after that, you know, maybe you should just revert to uh, three of four. Sure. I think that there's a lot of experimentation that's going on and cost is probably doing some of it that's, that's valuable, but ultimately the idea of giving somebody one of your keys and then thinking that you're going to be able to strongly authenticate to that person uh, is flawed and a really bad idea. So you're saying, yeah, don't have confidence that somebody you, can't impersonate you to Casa. That's basically it. Don't have confidence would, that somebody can't impersonate you to your aunt or to anybody else that you hand that key to. So what you're saying is an argument against uh, uh, renewing service. Uh, yes, I, I, it, sure. What I'm saying is that the idea of giving somebody uh, your key and asking them to hold it for you should be something that you think of as a weak link in your chain, right? So mm -hmm. you don't want to, for example, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't create a three of five and then give all five of those keys to my attorney, my CPA, my aunt, my wife, my cousin, right? That would be a really bad idea because you're assuming that all of those things are secured and they can't be secured very well because you um, you could be impersonated fairly easily to most of those people. And, and if they knew each other, they could collude. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's worse if they're known entities, right? So like if you give uh, if you give a key to your CPA and you give another one to your attorney, hopefully those are not the CPA and the attorney that helped you through your last tax dispute, right? So they right. don't yeah. even know that they, there's mutual client there. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with something like a service that holds keys is that if you give keys to anybody, if you gave me one of your keys, I guarantee mm -hmm. you, I would immediately think, ah, Casa has the other two. That's three of five. Let me see if I can cut a deal with Jameson, right? You don't right. You know, like that. There, there's so solution. many downsides of using a service to hold one of your keys and there's literally no significant upside at all. So it's not a good idea. Ex so uh, again, depending on your threat model, right? Like if uh, no, there's if, no scenario in which you're better off giving James your that key. I perfectly defend two of the keys and the other two keys uh, I have, you know, given to other people who managed to lose them. Uh, uh, and now I need, you know, I'm, you know, praying that, you know, the third party, you know, person that I'm paying to hold them actually held them. Right. That's a, that's probably that's the a most very that's there. a very niche weird scenario when you could just say no, All right, look, the government's going to come after you like they did for gold. I mean, no, no. Look, I mean that that, that is a possibility that your the stuff in your safety deposit box isn't secure. I'm not saying you should open up five bank accounts. That would be terrible. Right. Five different safety deposit box would be bad because of even though it's a long shot to some degree, depending on what your country is, um, it is a possibility. But putting one in a bank putting one with a CPA and then hiding the other three yourself, right? That's, that's not a terrible scenario to secure a hundred thousand dollars, but taking one of those three and giving it to Casa and paying them a lot of money when they're worse than the safety deposit box, arguably in some scenarios, they're worse than the CPA in other scenarios. And they're worse than your attorney in other scenarios. There's no scenario in which those, one of those three options is not better than CASA and it's far more expensive and everybody knows they hold keys. Like they're just this big fat juicy target. Except that they actually set the stuff up for you and you can get started. So uh, that's a different, that's a different part of the service. I would, I would be willing to say that maybe it's worthwhile. Like maybe they're a good consulting company. Maybe they're a good service to, to provide education and help you get set up. I'm not, I'm not arguing that point. That's not really what their business model is. Um, so I probably wouldn't be complaining about them in the first place, but the idea of them holding a key and it is our job to hold the key. That is a really bad idea. Announcing to the world, we hold keys for people. And then, uh, charging a lot of money because you have to charge a lot because you're such a big fat target when you could just use a CPA is insanity. I understand what you're saying. I don't know enough people that I could trust to actually hold a key. Get and a they CPA and don't tell them that it's a key. They're more trustworthy than Jameson, even though he rubbed your shoulders at a firing range. 
I haven't been shooting with Jameson, uh, but um, the uh, uh, but, but think about that for a minute. A CPA that doesn't even know that they're holding a key is more trustworthy, yeah, than than a service that knows they have a, a, a part of the secret that gets them access to your Bitcoin so and has employees that know all of that information. So you're asking me to compare the probability of my CPA losing the key uh, or misauthenticating compared to the probability of the paid service losing the key or misauthenticating. Yeah, and you've got a bunch of employees at the paid service that know that there's a lot of juicy Bitcoin in play here. And you've got a CPA that doesn't know anything. It's just another paper. And they keep documents, they keep envelopes all the time for customers and ensure that they're not lost. They're not exactly, you know, we're, get a high-end CPA. Get a CPA that's 400 bucks an hour. Give them an envelope. I guarantee you he's not going to lose it. I don't guarantee you. Like, don't give him your one of one, but give him your one of seven, right? Mm-hmm. The, Which uh, is the most that I would ever recommend that you give to Casa anyway, right? The point, the point is they're comparable in every way that matters, and they're better in the sense that they don't even know that they have a key. And there is they're an infinitely empirical, cheaper. I, th I, think that, I think this is something that one could actually go and find real data on, right? Is the, uh, no, the this is, I mean, this is the loss. This is what this is what twenty years in software security gets you, right? Like this is this is why you uh, you have to pick your experts carefully. This is why if you if you you know if you follow uh, cyber cypherpunk spice Jameson mm -hmm. Lop uh, mm -hmm. that you know is uh, you know uh, uh, Roger Ver is Liberty Spice. Um, Jameson Lop is like, like the Spice right? Girls. Is that the exactly. reference? Yeah, the, the phony version <laughs> of, uh, I mean, the, the front end developer that has no experience, but uh, as uh, you know, is, is known as some sort of uh, stud just because he is such an idiot that he'll take photos of guns uh, and put them on Twitter, which nobody that actually has any experience with firearms and firearms training would ever do. Um, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a phony character for sure. So one of the things you have to do that's in this space is you have to be careful on who you pick your experts. Um, and just like you have to be careful when you pick a doctor or radiologist, like it's not, you pick the wrong one, you're going to, you're going to suffer. Uh, there's no way, there's no way around that really. Um, and I'm telling you, you do not want to be putting your keys in the hands of, uh, of these characters when it's expensive and there's better alternatives. The, uh, uh, so I, I, I understand your opinion, uh, and I concede fully uh, that your opinion, uh, uh, based on experience, has to be better than mine, right? Because uh, I don't have a security background. Um, uh, the uh, question is, is, am I convinced? And this set, we see this with patients all the time, people who don't believe us. It's like, look, you're sure. like, you yep. don't have long. Like, it, it's yeah. time to get your affairs in order. Right. Uh, and uh, 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 when things ultimately come down to trust, right? Yep. Uh, which is- Well, I mean, look, in this scenario, I think you can think about it pretty simply. Like it, this, this, this is, there's a certain amount of judgment involved, but it's also just- <laughs> you, No, don't tell me you're judging people. <laughs> but just, just think about it like this. Literally, you done quite a bit. What are the chances that a, that a rogue employee who, who is an expert <laughs> in Bitcoin, all they think about is securing Bitcoin, finds a way to steal your Bitcoin because they know that that's what their company does, Right. Versus the chances they, that they can, yeah. Right. They but, can but listen, your, they can steal your key, right? Yep. Yep. So, so stealing, we're agreed that the chances that the CPA that doesn't even know that they have a key finds a way to identify that it is a key and then finds a way to steal it is less likely than the guys that are hired specifically to secure the keys know they have the keys and have a bunch of constant temptation to find a way to get their hands on them. Like that's just simple logic. Like that doesn't really require a lot of expertise. So we're, we're agreed that the, the chances of theft with the CPA is far less. So if we use that risk model uh, of, you know, insert C random CPA, let's say, is Pierre Richard a CPA? You know, so, 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 we'll see I don't, Pierre, so. I don't he's Jewish, but I don't think he's a CPA. <laughs> well, I thought it was an accountant or something. Uh, Sorry, rabbi. I could, couldn't resist. Um, but uh, uh, shout the, out to the Bitcoin rabbi there. <laughs> He's a cool guy. I like his book. I love it a lot. Awesome. Actually. Great uh, book. Really if you guys good. have not read that. It is excellent. 
uh, I put that up there with Safe's book. Um, the uh, but yeah, the secure. You know, uh, if you know, insert random CPA name. Uh, the probability of him recognizing what he has uh, and then using it against me, I would consider that to be a very low probability event. The probability of my attacker figuring out, you know, who I used. I, I guess that's a low probability event. Uh, you know, what CPA I used. Uh, uh, so you think or, that's a lower probability event than them figuring out they used CASA? Some random say. CPA that you just hire, if you're really paranoid, pay them in cash so that there's not even a transaction in your bank account with their name on it. What are the chances that, let's say that, that JW is trying to get your Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I know that CASA is a reasonable place to go. I have no idea that, you know, Bob, Fred, and Tom, you know, high-end CPA is a reasonable place to go to try to get a hold of one of your keys. So, so I guess uh, there's always two sides, you know, to a market arrangement, right? Uh, so what you're saying is uh, uh, the, the service that uh, a place like Casa is selling uh, is, is too expensive. No, no. What I'm saying is just one thing at a time here. So... Okay. Oh, no, We're no, just no. talking about theft. We're talking about an inside job or an outside job, right? Uh -huh. So let's do it slower. Okay? I'm proposing let's start a company and do it the way that you think it should be done. Uh, I'm, I'm saying don't start a company. I would never trust a company of people to hold one of my keys, uh, no matter how cheap it was, when I could have a CPA that doesn't even know that they have one of my keys. That's better. So you're, In so every you're, scenario you're, that I can walk you through. You have a company that secures none of your keys, but helps you prepare and tells you where to put them and how to do it. Absolutely. Who, so, you, so you're proposing yeah, yeah. an alternative business model. Yes, I would be very happy with that. Um, I think that's a great idea. I'm hoping, I'm sure that that's going to develop over time. Hopefully, mm -hmm. people that are listening will will. I mean, part of it is the hardware is just not there yet. Uh, it's all it's all really hard. Like I, you and you don't like. What you want and solutions as for eternity are not necessarily something that may even exist right now, but solutions that'll get you through the next, you know, Bitcoin bubble. Actually, uh, I don't. I uh, to to be totally honest, I don't know how I would secure a million dollars in Bitcoin. It's not a problem that I have, um, but it would not be easy right now. And I don't know how I would recommend that, but I sure as hell wouldn't recommend that uh, Casa Hodel or any of these companies that hold the key be part of it. Mostly because multi-sig is really, really hard right now. And you don't want to end up in a situation where you're hiring somebody to set up multi-sig for you because then they have access to your stuff. Um, in a perfect world, and I'm sure that this will be the case in 10 years, there'll be books, there'll be tons of online resources. You'll be able to go out and do a do-it-yourself setup without trusting anybody. You'll you'll go buy the hardware off the shelf, the mm -hmm. software will be fairly user-friendly, and then you'll jump on a plane and move these keys to you know various places and check off your checklist of, yes, I'm in a different country, yes, I have one with a, you know, with an attorney, yes, I, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but my whole argument, the whole point of this is that services that hold a key for you are not going to be on that list of things that are going to be done in 10 years and are going to be recommended because you're more likely to have inside jobs. You're more likely to have outside jobs. It's got to be more expensive because it's more likely and you don't actually get better authentication than you would from a CPA or an attorney or a safety deposit box. So yeah. you get a bunch of cons and you get no pros. Other than the alternatives don't exist yet. That's they a question of setup. That's a question of setup. Like this, this, if they offer, look, if you're, if somebody says, Hey, you know, Casa does this great service and they really help you set it up. And the mm -hmm. hardware that they use is really secure and they're using open source software that has had a ton of code review and blah, blah. I don't know that that's the case. I I'm very mm -hmm. skeptical, but if they did that, I would say, okay, cool. Use them for that, but don't leave those bastards holding on to any of your keys. Again, there's okay. a price for everything. So that might be a reasonable thing to say, Hey, yeah, uh, uh, happy to pay you. Uh, how much for to buy that fifth key off of you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, that's not a, that's not really something I was arguing against. I think I failed. I think I probably owe you a hundred bucks in Bitcoin, but I gave it, I gave it the college try and hopefully this will be a good episode. So, uh, what I do agree with is, is that as a permanent solution, 
there probably is not a huge advantage uh, in the most adversarial case uh, of having in a any case, target pointed on the, you know, put on the door. Right. <laughs> The, uh, uh, so here, not any case, right? right? So suppose I die and my wife finds two of these and you know she knows there's this you know uh, gun loving guy uh, that my husband shared an interest with once, you know, uh, and uh, uh, hey, he's in Bitcoin, I'll go talk to him. Right? He's easier to find, uh, right? So like uh, the- uh, uh, Yeah, you d th that, is a, that is another problem making sure that, but what you basically just said is because it's so obvious how to hack the system. If I'm dead and here no longer, and my wife is left, she'll probably be able to hack the system without me. Right. That's not an advantage, but <laughs> it's not an advantage right. on the security side. It, the, it's not it, a it's not a pro. Uh, I mean, you, you could you could always argue. Uh, these so here's what my brain is not good at, and this is what makes talk, this, these kinds of discussions difficult: is that you have like a whole vector, an array of uh, possible scenarios, each with different probabilities, uh, uh, and then you pass them through. Uh, well, I'll put a key here and a key here and a key here, uh, and then you try to see what all of these you know probabilities for you know all the, this big branching tree structure of uh, you know. Uh, you know, what yeah, it's, a, it's a threat model. And to, yeah. yeah, and then trying to add up the probability of each of these events. No, no, you, I mean, you, you don't do that. You don't have to add up the probabilities of the events. What you, what you do is it's more like a logical exercise, which is what we've been going through, um, where you, it's not important the probability of all these things happening. What you do is you make a list of all the bad things that can happen, and then you use experience and hopefully a certain amount of intellect to just say, what are the what are the options for safeguards that I can right. apply to this? Which are the best ones in this situation? Most, um, and then you just apply them and you move on to the next one. Most professions, from plumbing to you know medicine, uh, usually have their uh, uh, reliable rules of thumb for collapsing probabilities of multiple events uh, down into a manageable number to make statistically good decisions. Um, and uh, uh, and that's you know the kind of thing that you need lots of experience in order to be get good at doing. Um, uh, 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 and so I guess it's no wonder why it's hard for my brain to think about all these possibilities is because it is a profession, right? <laughs> right, right, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, yep, but again, I mean, there's also the, when, when, if I was doing a good job, we'd be talking about a very specific scenario. So inside job, um, and if we were actually formally threat modeling, like if you hired me as a consultant and we were threat modeling this, one of the things that we would brainstorm is inside job at the you know the service holding the keys, right? Okay. And so we would we would yeah. say, hey, that's a threat. Um, how do we mitigate that? Well, one way we could mitigate that is that the service doesn't know that they have the keys. And we'd look at each other as smart people and we'd say. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's cheap. Yeah. There's no downsides. Yeah, we're going to implement that. Any service, any person that holds the keys, we're not going to tell them that we're going to, you know, we're going to do our best within reason to not let them know that they're holding keys. We might even tell them, hey, this is a copy of my will only open upon my death, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you end up doing those sort of things when you're threat modeling and coming up with safeguards. It's not really probability based so much, not in this, this particular uh, field. So let's 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 go with the assumption that the service that's holding your fifth key, yeah, is corrupt and hacked. Yeah, let's just let's just assume that's a given. But the probability is very very low that they won't give you a copy of that key. Okay. Is that as an, I think that's okay. An, so it's like your keys on a billboard. Yes, a billboard that's, uh, in fact, your key is written to the Bitcoin blockchain in plain text. Right, so just don't, don't. so what you did is you turned it from a three of five to a two of five. So just set up a two of five in the first place. Okay, so how would, yeah, so how would them being, yeah, I, I agree that they would. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's the thing. There is some value. There is some value in giving your aunt one of the keys, especially if she doesn't know that she has it, right? A lot of that value is in redundancy. You're sort of trading off security for redundancy, right? You're increasing the chances of theft. Every time you increase the number of keys in play, you're increasing the chances of theft, but you're decreasing the chances of losing all the keys right. that you, you need. Right. So, it, and but it's a judgment call, right? But here's the thing, when you get two options, when you get, a CPA or an attorney versus the service, and every single one of the threats that you can think of 
with the exception of, well, it's easier to like, we obviously don't want to choose it because it's easier to impersonate me or hack me, mm -hmm. right? In case I'm dead. We want to address that. And that needs, that's a problem that's hard. Like, I don't have a lot of answers for that. I'm not going to presume <laughs> that there, there's a, what's her name, uh, wrote a book on it. I don't think it's all that great. I don't think there are a, a lot of great answers on that. Um, how you make sure that your loved ones have all your stuff in the event of your death. One of the best ways that I can think of would be um, to have, you know, do what we do with a will, right? Your attorney has one, your CPA has one. Uh, but again, you're, you're, you're sort of making it more likely that you don't lose them, even if you're dead, right? Like you, you, your, your family still has them, but you're decreasing the security. So there's a lot of judgment call stuff that goes on, but at the point where you have two options, and one is better in every scenario we can think of, right? Um, a CPA is better in, in every scenario. And authentication, you know. Uh, Especially if you tell your wife, right? Like, hey, it might be a good idea to say, hey, honey, I hired this CPA and they're holding <laughs> one of the private keys. Yeah. So if I'm dead, uh, call them because I'm not relying on you being a hacker and Jameson being an idiot. I've had many generations of you know personal key storage, starting with literally uh, looking at a, a private key on my computer and writing it down on an envelope. <clears throat> and yeah. uh, I can assure you, actually not losing those uh, is, it's hard. is a non-trivial task. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, having been uh, you know a bit paranoid, uh, uh, you know I haven't actually lost uh, you know things like. But, and I, all the way to like crypto steals and hammering crap on, you know, <laughs> uh, the, uh, 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 which is, you know, maybe more work than is truly necessary. Um, That's the conclusion that I came you know, to as well. Since you don't know where it's going, uh, you know, what I want to avoid is, you know, uh, uh, oh man, if I had only done such and such, right? Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, what's a few hours worth of work, right? Um, the, uh, so but, so uh, you so do a four of five, a four of nine, or a five of nine, or whatever, right? Like purchasing those services from another. Uh, 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 I don't. I don't think you can, even if you do. You know, very. Uh, again, uh, that's that's sort of a separate part of their service, right? Um, and we're we're not arguing that if somebody helps you set this up well, they're not providing value. What they're, what we're arguing is, do you want a service to hold one of the keys or more than one of the keys and authenticate you? And they don't have any way to authenticate you that's any better than, than other things. Um, when you so have I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I definitely have said everything that I've got. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, the, I still see, I understand your, I understand your point. Uh, my my one concern, and this is something that uh, is hard to argue empirically, uh, yeah. is can I actually find somebody uh, who's less likely to lose a key, uh, a lawyer, a CPA, blah blah blah, uh, versus people you know who kind of know how to ma to manage keys. Uh, and there's so many unknowns in that question. All, uh, all you have to do is call an attorney and call a CPA and say, "Hey, do you guys hold on to documents? How, how often do you lose them?" Like, the, uh, when was the last time you lost a will for a client? Like, how, how long has your firm been in business? Don't call Saul. Like, well, call how, a real how, attorney. No, no, I, how do they manage document integrity, security, backup? Like, uh, Ask them. This is not a new problem. They've been doing it for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. The, uh, uh, you know, I think there are lessons to be learned there, uh, which I think would be interesting if we did have. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I, I, I'm... I, yeah. I have some knowledge of how they do that sort of stuff, but it, that's mm -hmm. it's more um, it's certainly more important and interesting when you're you're talking about maybe millions of dollars of Bitcoin. And right. you know, those are probably questions that you would want to ask the attorney before you hired them and mm -hmm. before you added them to your your equation. Same thing with the CPA. But you know, these big these, especially if you were dealing with a big firm, it's these are not new problems to these guys. Um, you don't want to tell them it's Bitcoin again, but Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not losing documents left and right. They wouldn't be in business very long. And you have redundancy, right? If, you know, what are the chances that a major law firm, a major CPA, and uh, you know your bank all just happen to lose something? Not very likely. But if right. you're worried about that, add another key, right? But right. don't uh, don't start putting your keys in the hands of people that are more likely to be targets and less likely to be able to do the job and also 
more likely to do an inside job because they know what they have. So, all right, man, I, I, I owe you a hundred bucks in Bitcoin. It's coming my, my way. I'll, my, I'll catch you on Twitter. Um, my, what, what I would request is that you send it to a charity, uh, find a good one, uh, one that you think is appropriate. Uh, the, uh, I, uh, yeah, I know I'm sending it to you. You send it to a charity. <laughs> oh, but then, I have to, then I have to be on the, so, uh, uh I've known, uh, <laughs> No, anyway, uh, well, that's all right. Let me, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll work out the logistics after. Okay. So, all right, guys, hopefully that was, uh, at least, um, interesting. These are like seriously hard problems that are still very, very new. And obviously think, we don't have, a business uh, plan. this is a company that you should start, uh, uh you know, is consult getting... on people and help them figure out where to put their keys and, and understand that giving them to the wrong people is not a, good idea uh, and where they should put it. It's, it's hard, right? Like, mm -hmm. should I do a three of five? Should I do a seven of nine? Should I do a five of nine? Um, like even that question is really, really hard. And I haven't seen anybody that's done a lot of uh, describing scenarios or, you know, um, working things out. Um, it's, it's a lot of judgment call stuff right now. And it's probably going to be a lot of judgment calls for a long time. Like we are, there's no industry best practices for this stuff. Right. Um, so uh, it, hopefully it's been interesting at least to hear us, you know, debate and try to work it through and uh, uh, hear me try to convince uh, uh, Brian that Jameson Lop is a douche. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so it, at some level, though, there is value in getting to know people, right? Uh, totally. And uh, that's a judgment call that I think when you meet and hang out and talk with people, uh, you can get a feeling for. And that's hard to quantify, right? Uh, and uh, so... You know, all right. Well, it, it, it <laughs> all right, man. Yo, okay. um, cool. All right. So yeah, hopefully you guys found value in that. Uh, if you did, uh, check out mathbot.com. Uh, tell some kids about it. Um, we'll see if we can get a few less kids on medication and uh, a few more kids that know that they're good at math and programming, even if their their teachers want them to sit still and they won't. Um, and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, where, where can they follow you, man? Um, I'm on Twitter at underscore DRGO. Uh, uh, I don't know that I'm the most useful person to follow, uh, but uh, if anyone's interested in, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to point a satellite dish at, you know, point, you know, small spot in the sky, uh, uh, I've got a little experience with that. Uh, right on. So there's that. That's a whole nother whole another topic. But I think yeah, there's yeah, no, you, you've you've been putting out some interesting stuff lately, and uh, yeah, definitely follow him on Twitter. Um, very smart guy, obviously, and uh, you can. You know, I'm sure you guys have uh, know who I am, but you can follow me on Twitter at uh, jwweatherman underscore. Um, and uh, yeah, look forward to everybody's feedback on this. And uh, yeah, tell tell Loppy's a douche. All right, I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't want to end with that. I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Yeah, take it.